I hope you're well rested. I hope you had a good break. I hope you uh, you enjoyed the, the snacks uh, and you participated in the, in the book, book swap. Um, and so on. I'm, I'm incredibly happy to be here. It's my first time in Morocco. It's my first uh, week in Arabia. Uh, and I, I'm already loving, this is my first morning here. Uh, um, I'm already loving uh, being able to experience the community. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to many, many more conversations here while I'm here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my perspective as a researcher about Wikipedia's concept of knowledge equity, which uh, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. Many of you will already be quite familiar with it. Uh, I, uh, I'm new to the Wikimedia community. I joined uh, Wikimania last year in Cape Town, which was my first in-person encounter with the community. And I was incredibly fascinated uh, uh, with, uh, with how far you've come and what, what you've achieved. Uh, so I, I think in many ways, uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, as, a, as a movement is, uh, uh, is something that a lot of others can learn from. At the same time, you also have, you're, you're constantly, because you're, of your ambitions and your aspirations, you're constantly confronted with new frontiers, and this is also a little bit of what I want to talk about today. But first, maybe a very general introduction. As you know, Wikipedia is at this point is a massive project, hundreds of millions of pages, millions of contributors. One of the things that we have to remember, remind ourselves that's quite significant about Wikipedia as a platform and Wikimedia as a foundation is that it's a non-profit, uh, and it places the collective benefit at the center of the ambition, and I think that's core in, in a lot of the things we do within Wikipedia. Um, the, the vision, as, as I understand it, is to place, uh, uh, to collect the sum of all human knowledge and make that available to every person in the world. So, in, in, in my work as a researcher, I'm, I'm looking at uh, online platforms and to what extent online platforms represent different parts of the world and to what extent different parts of the world participate in the creation of these representations. Uh, so f Wikipedia for me is a, is a very interesting uh, phenomenon, to, phenomenon to, to look at. And one of the questions I have when, when I look at Wikipedia is to, to what extent are we close to this uh, uh, Wikipedia vision? To what extent has the world in its entirety, entirety been written about today? So there are different ways of looking at it. One of the ways in which I'm looking at it is, is through geography, looking at uh, essentially uh, uh, the coordinates of locations that have been written about. So here's a uh, a Wikipedia page of a castle uh, that's in Germany, and on pages like that, you often have geo coordinates up as part of the page. Um, so, in my work, I, I, I do big data work. Uh, I collect all these uh, geo coordinates, hundreds of, of uh, millions of uh, coordinates, and I put them on a map. This is an old map that many of you might already have seen. This is from, I think, 20, 2011, yes, where this showed back then, almost 10 years ago, the global geography of Wikipedia, essentially which places in the world have been written about on Wikipedia in 2011. When you look at it this way, you can see that arguably Wikipedia was writing about the world, because most, most parts of the world are in there somehow, but you also see there was a big imbalance at the time, that there was a lot of content about Europe, uh, a lot of content about North America, then certain, certain other places like uh, Japan is, is very present, uh, parts of uh, India, kind of South, South Asia are very present, uh, but many other parts were not visible on that map. So this was back then. I'll show you, remember the shape of that map, and specifically remember North Africa here, uh, and I'll show you in a bit what it looks like today, which is much, much better. So these are, this is an example of information geography, this is what I do, so where geography as a discipline uh, looks at uh, what is in the world is, is, does this place have a castle? Information geography asks, is this castle on uh, Wikipedia? And when we look at Wikipedia through the lens of information and geography, we, we see this imbalance of representation. We see that some, certain parts of the world are highly densely uh, documented on Wikipedia, or were at the time, and, and other parts aren't. Of course, the next question then is, why do we see this imbalance? Um, it's, it's a complex question, and, and in fact, many factors play into this, but one of the most fundamental aspects is the very practicality of being able to go online. So in many parts of the world, uh, this, again, this is from four or five years old, uh, um, connectivity at the time was incredibly uh, expensive in many parts of the world. Uh, for me, as a European, um, it's, uh, it is, this may be unexpected because we, uh, we are in a situation where maybe we have a, a smartphone, we have broadband at home, we have broadband at work. Um, so I, I don't spend my days thinking about the cost of connectivity, but for many other places in the world that is not true. 
Um, and one way of illustrating that is, is this map. This compares the cost of broadband connectivity to the, the average monthly salary. And this map shows that there are regions in the world where broadband costs more than the average monthly salary. Um, which is just one way of illustrating that uh, uh, the ability to go, online, to go online is not uh, globally equally distributed. So this is now rapidly changing, both in Africa and also in, in, in India, South Asia, many other places. Connectivity, the cost of connectivity is dropping through, through uh, smartphones and, and other uh, technologies. Uh, but I think broadly uh, the, the point still stands that among the many barriers to participation is, is one of them. So it's not just a, a, an imbalance of representation of the world look being uh, unequally represented on Wikipedia and other platforms, it's also an imbalance in participation. Not everybody in the world finds it equally easy to participate. One of the challenges that then, when people write about places that where, where broadband is expensive, where, where there are barriers to access, is often outsiders who write about these places. Um, so, in, uh, uh, when, uh, in, in many uh, articles about African, North African uh, countries, uh, it's not necessarily articles written about by uh, locals which might be fine, or might, might also sometimes mean that, uh, that local perspectives are missing. So this, this here illustrates this point. Uh, this is a map from last year, where we're comparing, we're looking at the anonymous edits of uh, Wikipedia to Wikipedia articles across all the languages. Uh, each edit has an IP address associated with it, which allows us to look at the location uh, at the, of the contributor, uh, kind of at country resolution, so we know that an edit for a particular page was made from a particular country. And then we compare that to the location of the article. We essentially ask for articles written in a particular country in Africa, in North Africa, in South Africa, and other places in the world. How many of the edits to those articles have been written about, have been contributed by people from that country? And here you see a similar kind of imbalance as we saw before, where a lot of European countries, North America, uh, Australia, and so on, they largely edit their own articles, whereas for many other uh, places, uh, uh, South, uh, Southeast Asia, many African countries, a lot of the contribution actually comes from outside the country. So this, this might still be from people who have lived in that country, for, this might be diaspora and, and all this kind of, we, we, we don't know who those people are. But largely we know uh, that at least uh, um, when you look at anonymous editors, a lot of those contributions are not necessarily produced locally. Yeah, so connectivity is one issue. There are many others, and in a way, that would be its own talk to, to just to talk about all the, the, the many barriers that go into, uh, 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 that make it hard for, for, for many people to contribute. Um, I'm going to mention, mention a few, uh, um, uh, but I'm sure you, you also, you've, you've, you've had many of those kinds of discussions yourself. One of them th that I found quite interesting is, uh, is this issue of contribution norms. Here, here's an example of a Wikipedia page about the Yanomami tribe, which is a, an Amazonian tribe. And there's a particular claim that uh, the, uh, um, this paragraph makes about their marital practice, about uh, what, kind of, what forms of marriage uh, uh, are, are practiced in this particular tribe. And it ends with the tag citation needed which in principle you kind of understand as a Wikipedian. We, we want to make sure that the claims we're making on pages, they are substantiated, we need sources. At the same time, this is a, a circumstance where it comes out of a culture that does not necessarily have an archive of that kind of knowledge written down. That, that culture is not necessarily documented in a form where it can easily be referenced. Here is, is, is another study that, that looks at this ability to reference sources and it uh, essentially uh, finds that one of the barriers to, to contribution is that in many places of the world, local references are not available. Meaning, even if you have a local Wikipedian who, who contributes those articles, they might have a hard time going past the moderators, um, because the moderators will tell them, well, you need, to, you need to provide sources for that claim, and those sources are not necessarily available. So there's another barrier here. Uh, one of the uh, additional outcomes that this leads to is that a lot of the knowledge that is written about particular places um, is not necessarily in a local language, often it's written in a foreign language. This is a map here that illustrates that. All the, all the countries that are shaded in orange have a lot of content written about those places in a local language. So in, in Russia, most of the articles about Russia have been written about in Russian. 
most of the articles in Finland and North America have been written about in Finnish. But then there are uh, uh, pla many places in the global south where, where that is not true. Um, most many, many of the articles in uh, um, Mexico maybe have been written about in, uh, in English, and I don't think English is a national language in Mexico. Largely people speak Spanish. Uh, and also for, for many other uh, countries that, that is also true. Um, even including Italy, a lot of apparently uh, um, and there's a lot of uh, 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 Wikipedia content that is not accessible to the Italians because they don't speak uh, foreign language. Um, so the, the question then becomes not only which places are being documented or who creates those uh, um, who creates those uh, those pages, but largely who who controls the information about places and. Um, um, what, how that, does that shape our understanding of the world? Now, to your big credit, I, I mean, this is one of the one of the uh, things that I'm really impressed with with the Wikipedia community. Uh, you you are taking this really seriously, and you have been for a long time now, for at least uh, a decade, but maybe since the beginning. Uh, that uh, and this is exactly where your initial ambition to capture the world's knowledge uh, comes in, and that, that you that you recognized uh, early on. Uh, that these imbalances exist. And uh, not only have you recognized that, you're putting a lot of effort into addressing those. So in the last uh, few years of uh, strategy development within the Wikipedia community, uh, came this one, one of the things that came out of, uh, of uh, strategy discussions is this powerful concept of knowledge equity, which not only recognizes that this imbalance, these forms of imbalance exist, but also um, recognizes that this is a result of a systemic inequality. This is not necessarily just about Wikipedia, this is largely actually about the broader context, this is about people's circumstance, and it's a global issue, it's a structural issue. And in order to address the structural issue, we need to put effort into uh, uh, rectifying, into addressing injustices. So largely what, what knowledge equity recognizes is not an issue of equal treatment, it's not allowing everybody to participate because everybody can create an account um, this is about recognizing, actually, for, for some people, it's quite hard to even get to the place where they can sign up to create an account and so on. So this is actually an issue of opportunity. And one of the things that's really powerful about knowledge equity as a, as a concept is that it recognizes that and, and um, promises to put efforts to address, to, uh, to allow uh, for equal opportunity to exist. And then there are now hundreds of projects in the, in the wikiverse, in the, in, in the ecosystem, in the movement. Uh, to address it. Uh, so, uh, generally, I'm, I'm incredibly impressed with, uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the tenacity and with the, uh, with the passion with which uh, uh, this, uh, this, these kinds of questions are being looked at. And as a result, a lot of those imbalances <coughs> in, in the content they are going away. So, this is uh, a map of the, the growth of uh, Wikipedia content about Africa, and just in the last few years, it's, it's exploded and it's massive. Um, However, in, in comparison to everything else, it's still, like, there's still an imbalance where you hear the red line here is content about Europe and, and Central Asia, and these are big places, and there's a lot of stuff to be written. But a lot of these regions in the world, they're just as big, they have just as many people, if not more. So I think there's still, there still a lot of work, work uh, to do. So, yeah, one, one, of, one of the things uh, that, that I find fascinating in these things about Wikipedia is that it, with this, this bold ambition, this bold vision, um, it, it, it works, and we've demonstrated this, and, and uh, uh, we, we have to recognize that Wikipedia is, is the largest collaborative effort that has, has ever existed in human history. Wikipedia is an incredibly successful project. It's a, it's a miracle of human collaboration. And yet, we constantly also find ways in which it's insufficient, so we, we, we kind of, it also keeps us hungry, it keeps us looking for, for, for things that are, uh, for places where we want to do better. And it keeps kind of bringing us back to this question, how, not only how do we do this, but how, how do we do this well. Last year at, uh, at Wikimania, um, there, there was this fascinating Q&A session, um, it was in Cape Town in South Africa, and uh, one of the editors in this Q&A session, uh, one of the local editors stood up and she said, um, so hold on, you're asking us to contribute our knowledge for free. Hmm, people here can't afford to volunteer their time. 
So she was a long, uh, 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 long time uh, Wikipedian. She was not actually surprised uh, in, the, in that moment, but she was articulating something that I think is quite important. Uh, and she articulated that out of her understanding of her local circumstance in relation to uh, uh, maybe Wikipedia's perspective on, on what, what it means to contribute to Wikipedia. And largely what she was saying is, um, Wikipedia maybe thinks of it as a, as a volunteering project, which it is, which is kind of people do it in their spare time, and, and it, it comes out of personal passion and all these things. And I, and I think it is that, and it's really important. But it's also important to recognize that the capacity to do that is not equally distributed. And there are many places in the world, maybe most places in the world, where people don't have the spare time. Um, so I, I think one of the current kind of frontiers within Wikipedia is to is to think about these forms of these these kinds of relationships, where um, Wikipedia is a, is a is a volunteering effort. It's an open source community. It's an open data community. It's a uh, it's an education resource and all these kind of things. But I think that there is also an open question about what Wikipedia means in terms of access to employment um, and access to, or even just economic barriers to participation. Um, I had conversations yesterday with, uh, with Felix and Anna, uh, and, and it really resonated um, uh, what, what they've been um, telling me about, what, what they told me about uh, their, their perspective on this issue. And there were a few things uh, that came out of it that, that for me were, were really interesting to hear where Partially, this is a question of, of salaries uh, and, and, and being able to pay the rent and so on, which in, in the Wikipedia context becomes a complicated issue because you don't want paid editing. And I understand where that's coming from. Fundamentally, I, I, I don't quickly disagree with that. I still think Wikipedia needs to figure out how to pay editors largely. Um, because um, yeah, as we, as we say, not everybody has, has the capacity to volunteer. However, the, as I say, it's not necessarily just about salaries. There's, there, there are other kind of other forms of barrier that come into play here. Um, at gatherings like this, how easy, how easy is it for people to join and be in the room? Um, can uh, the foundation pay for transport, pay for travel? Um, uh, can, uh, to, are there forms of local support, access to venues, access to meeting rooms, uh, even access to computing resources and, and other forms of support? They all require money, um, and they, and which also means they all potentially become barriers. Um, so I, I think there's a whole, whole set of questions there where the foundations are really, really, uh, uh, really proactive. And uh, also generally we have to recognize that uh, Wikipedia as a project is, is very well funded because they're really good at fundraising. Uh, so there are these key resources available. However, I think there's uh, um, there, there are still opportunities to uh, to to take this further. Because in the end, these these economic imbalances, these global economic imbalances, which maybe we don't always see in in our local circumstance, but when we look at the, the shape of of the world and kind of the the, the, the circumstances, the different circumstances in the world, they are they are absolutely there they become unintentional processes of exclusion. Um, so, coming back to the map we looked at earlier um, of, uh, of uh, the, the geotags in, uh, in uh, Wikipedia. Um, earlier this year, I, I tried to get, a, get, a, get, a, get an update on what it looks like today. Um, so this is the, the shape of Wikipedia uh, today. Um, well, I think early last year, uh, so it's, it's, it's even already, uh, uh, it's going to be even, even richer than, than, uh, than this visualization. <coughs> but here we already see it's, it looks so much different. Uh, and again, <coughs> look at North Africa and look at that coastline. Look at uh, Morocco, um, where just a few years ago um, there was nothing there. And now it's like it's bright and there's a lot of a lot of knowledge that is now, that is now uh, captured, that is written up, uh, that is made available to people. This is across all the languages, so a lot of this is not necessarily English, a lot of this is in all kinds of languages. Um, so there, uh, there, there are many places in the world where just in those few years um, Wikipedia is looking much, much better. And it's because of you, because you're taking these things seriously and you're putting effort and time behind it. And you're, I understand that being in Wikipedia uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's messy, and sometimes it feels hard, and sometimes uh, it feels like an impossible challenge. But look at this progress. Look at how, how, how beautifully uh, um, 
people have uh, kind of nudged the shape of this towards something that is, is much more equal, that's much more, there's still work to do, but I think we also have to take moments to recognize that we're doing well. So congratulations to you. Uh, I'm, as I say, I'm excited to be here. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Um, have a good day. A good round of time. I don't know if we have time for questions or if the next speaker is going to go on and on. Uh, when you said economic imbalances, uh, you might also consider, especially uh, with Brexit, uh, with Brexit, the, the visa issues. Uh, people from the third world, from the from the developing countries, experience enormous difficulty going to the U.S., going to the U.K., going to Europe uh, to join in uh, in meetings like this. So I think the movement has to consider also yeah. that we bring meetings like this to the south. Absolutely. So the, the, the point of uh, Derek made was that we also have to consider these issues. We have to also consider where, where the world organizes this event. In our conversation with, with Anna yesterday, she pointed out that the World Economic Forum, when it organizes its event, um, it pays for the visa and the travel and the accommodation to an extent where you as a participant get a form that you then take to uh, the, I guess, the, the border or the foreign office or whatever, and they already have their visa prepared. So not only do they, does the World Economic Forum pay for all the parts of the process, they make it easy for you to then kind of get the documents. And that, that's remarkable. And also, as, as you say, like, where do we, where in the world do we organize these events? I think it's incredibly important that Wiki, Wiki Arabia exists. Uh, I think uh, as, as part of uh, um, uh, uh, shifting, essentially, for me, like, we also have to recognize Part of that issue is also about the centralization of, of, uh, of uh, decision making, right? And essentially, the centralization of capacity and so on. And we need to kind of distribute that. We, make, we need to make many global centers that are each have their own capacity and, and, and so on. Um, there's a question here in the front. Yes, uh, I may sound a bit abstract, but um, I have like a, 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 a glimpse about. Uh, when I'm seeing you like pointing to the to the map and seeing like I mean I'm talking about this wow new horizon that is open and there is like a lot of effort which is uh, true but in same time uh, I had somehow another image in my mind that comes like this guy the fascist guy who uh, colonized um, kind of a lot of territories they're kind of proud and. I have a lot of that. How we can? I mean, it's um, it's a really tricky borders because we are in front of a big project of uh, centralization of knowledge. Uh, we're talking now about infrastructure, like how uh, there is a certain inequality in, in participation. You know, like how people from around the world could uh, contribute in in, in, in 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 creating the knowledge and creating the content, um, but. I feel that it's only on the point of physical or material um, uh, like uh, infrastructure that we're talking about. Like until we we are able to uh, allow to give to people some technological tools that they can uh, create the, 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 the content. But for me, there is another problem, which is um, with Wikipedia. It is produced from. It's say a, a European centrist way of saying or conceiving knowledge itself. So maybe I can take the word of epistemology as like a horizon of finitude. Um, it might be in other cultures different form of looking into the knowledge, or different form of uh, epistemology. I'm taking this word only as a um, 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 uh, for now, only for now, um, uh, because I cannot find another word in English for that. So uh, until when uh, Wikipedia could be um, can uh, actually listen to hear or understand uh, different way of um, uh, understanding the world, different way of producing the knowledge. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess um, if we set up a big structure uh, that somehow dictates how we understand something. We create a form of crisis of imagination, a form of like one way of thinking. So until when we 
can be like more flexible or is there any um, um, liquid way of, of, of understanding the needs uh, in more uh, local meaning? I mean, we have um, Wikipedia is based on uh, right practice or rightly practice. What about oral culture? Culture that doesn't read how uh, Wikipedia could uh, be um, or can understand, or at least be. And sorry for the gibberish. Um, no, no, that was very clear. Thank you, thank you very much for, for raising that. And, and I think you, these are these are key questions. I'm incredibly glad that you picked them up. Um, I, I, I I took out that section out of the talk in, in, in the interest of time, but but now you're giving me an opportunity to, to talk about it. So I'm very I'm doubly thankful. For that. Uh, if you don't know whose knowledge the organization whose knowledge, look them up. Um, uh, um, they organized last year. They organized an event called uh, Decolonizing the Internet. It was a pre-event to Wikimania in Cape Town. Look up Decolonizing the Internet, and they produced a report. Um, they, uh, which, uh, which is very uh, worthwhile looking into. Um, they, at, at that event, they brought together representatives from many global communities who specifically look at these kinds of questions. Uh, can my culture even appropriately be represented on platforms that were designed in a different culture? This is, is, is one of the central questions. Uh, for me as a computer scientist, also, I, I have to recognize, as a European uh, uh, male computer scientist, I have to recognize uh, that my training taught me, um, my computer science training taught me, uh, I build the technology for the world, and I build one up and then everybody gets to use it. And, and in the last 10 years, more and more, I start to realize that's not true. I can't, I don't know your culture, I don't know your living circumstances. How can I possibly build an app for you? You should be building that app yourself. Um, so when one of the, I think there's, and so this is where the colonization term comes in. Uh, um, where I think there's a lot of uh, powerful thinking in, in post-colonial uh, discourse around the relationship between global cultures, um, uh, which it suddenly becomes very uh, relevant in the context of Wikipedia. And maybe one of the uh, concepts that, for me personally, were, were quite instructive were about this incapacity to make decisions on, on the behalf of others. Uh, and uh, the, the, there's a term uh, that comes out of that discourse called the pluriversal. Um, so we, we sometimes we think of it as one world, and, and, and we can make an app that's universal, that is one app for the world. But really, when we look at where, where that app is used and, and what that looks like in practice, uh, and, and we see all the ways in which it's insufficient, uh, we have to recognize really what we're looking for is our pluriversal perspectives on the world. It's the recognition that the, the world is in fact many worlds, and they all coexist, and that's fine, and we don't need to kind of mess with that. Uh, and it's maybe more about how we have dialogue across these worlds, but maybe we don't need to force that into one kind of frame. Um, and, and again, this is where knowledge equity as a concept is incredibly powerful, because knowledge equity also, in it, has the notion that the decisions that are made should be made by the communities who are represented. They should be in the room when those decisions are made. Here. We can take three or more questions. We will be happy to chat after. More than three questions. So we can join, join them, bring them together, and you can respond before moving to the next speaker. Uh, hello, I'm Mark. Uh, I really admire your research. I like it very much, and I feel very aligned. And, um, and I like uh, very much this relationship between the causes or the barriers and the consequences and representation of knowledge. And uh, you give a, an overview, of, uh, especially on geospatial, and I would like to know if you think that there is uh, more research to do on barriers to understand them better, because uh, you mainly mentioned uh, internet connection and uh, free time and uh, economical resources, but perhaps there are others. So I would like to know uh, your opinion on that. Oh yeah, um, I wanted to ask whether, so the maps you show an increase of coverage online, um, that is only English Wikipedia, right? And so isn't that this, Which ones? Uh, the, the one that you showed in the beginning and then in the end, 
the, the yellow one, the so very last slide. This is all languages. This oh, all languages. but the first one was only English, I think. So the yeah, one where you said one. you'll... Yeah, anyway, I use your maps in my presentation. Yeah, it says English Wikipedia. Um, so, so that is always problematic, I find, when we compare that in English Wikipedia, I mean, obviously, to Wikipedia in general. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, just following up on the oral thing, um, or history and oral knowledge, we had a session with Wikimania, just a discussion round, and I think just to put it out in the room, I think it would be really cool to work, like, to meet up here as well. I'm not, I'm, I'm German, so I'm not in that culture at all, but I'm just good at organizing stuff, so I thought there is a point, I find this interesting as a topic, so we'd like to gather to have this constant topic across the communities, basically. Uh, so thank you for your insightful <coughs> presentation. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, my my question. I don't know if I, I should call it a question, but just uh, an observation. So what you talked about is about, uh, is knowledge equity or inequity. I would say. Um, you talk also about barriers, but I think those barriers, I would always would like to call them challenges. Yes, we have lots of financial challenges, like uh, the previous question asked. Uh, we have lots of, um, of challenges related to computational processing, availability. We have lots of um, challenges concerning um, all the things you mentioned in the presentation. But so the way I see it is um, we are in the age of innovation and adaptability. Why wouldn't, for example, I'm, I'm just asking assuming or I'm just um, suggesting, um, why wouldn't Wikipedia, for example, adapt and uh, create innovative tools? If we don't have much content about those communities and if we really care about that, why don't we innovate ways in which we can reach out to those people and make them present like, as, a, as a way to solve any equity in this, in, in this scenario? I think uh, it would be very financially demanding, but, but we can hack it as well. We can just uh, create communities and uh, and uh, connect with people and use innovation and especially technology. Thank you. Absolutely, yeah, it is very much true. And I think Wikipedia, as, 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 a, as, a, as a movement, is really demonstrating that capacity. And, and over the last uh, ten years, it has really become clear that it's in fact one of the strengths of, of uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia, both in, in terms of the foundations and the kind of the, the uh, institutional structures and the funding behind it and so on, but also in terms of the the broader uh, community and the ecosystem. I mean, they have so much capacity and so much uh, desire to make it happen. And, and many challenges, and I think you're, you're right, that's, that's a, uh, maybe, maybe a better word uh, than barriers, uh, but also a lot of uh, capacity, a lot of opportunity uh, uh, to, to push further. And, um, well, maybe, okay. Uh, I would like first to thank you. I appreciate your intervention. Uh, I will speak in Arabic. بخصوص كيف ننمي مساهمات في الجنوب أو في المغرب مثلا أقصيح مثلا أني ليس من الضرورة أن ندفع أجرا للمشاركين لأن هذا ربما سيبعدنا عن أهداف الكبيرية ولكن يمكن مثلا أن أن نقوم بمجهود أكبر بخصوص تكوينات بخصوص تحفيزات ليست أجرة ولكن تحفيزات من مثل مثلا اختيار أحسن مشروع ومثلا تقديم جوائز ولتكن هذه الجوائز منتظمة أو متقاربة أيضا هناك أمر وهو أنه في الجامعة مشروع ويكيبيديا غير معروف كمساهمين أي أن الطلاب الجامعيون يستعملون ويكيبيديا ولكن لا يساهمون مثلا أنا لا أعرف أي طالب أنا أستاذ في الجامعة لا أعرف أي طالب من طلبتي يساهم في مضمون ويكيبيديا أظن بأن فضاء الجامعة فضاء جيد جدا من أجل تنمية المضامين بالعربية في ويكيبيديا أي المطلوب هو مزيد من التشجيع مزيد من التعريف مزيد من التواصل حول هذا المشروع uh, First she is a university professor and she would like to uh, incentive her, her students to be, better participate in Wikipedia, <coughs> so better engaging. And her question is about not only to uh, uh, in, in engage, for example, for, for paid contribution, but rather for uh, uh, engaging some population, for example, for in the South countries, or in South, for example, Morocco. Felix. Felix. Are you, are you hearing us? 
Yeah. So the question is how how we can we, how can we incentive incentivize the people from the south and the, what we could provide for them to to engage in Wikipedia. So Ud, that's that's a brilliant question. That's, and I think this is one of the central questions to ask right now. Uh, and and I think this is exactly where also we need to remind ourselves that maybe the initial expectation about how Wikipedia works does not apply everywhere. And maybe we need to re-articulate how it happens and what it's for. I worked a lot with OpenStreetMap in the past. There are examples of that, how, where OpenStreetMap, which is a, a volunteer created map of the world, how OpenStreetMap is uh, uh, re-articulated depending on its context. There is now, initially it was, you map your own neighborhood. Later on, uh, it was uh, 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 mapping for humanitarian aid. There, there's a lot of uh, global need and a lot of global capacity to make that happen. And there are local communities. There, there's the uh, Bangladesh uh, Open Innovation Lab, which spend a lot of time trying to figure out how do they talk about OpenStreetMap to their local community, which maybe has, does not have a habit of volunteering or, or uh, uh, um, spending your spare time on, on, on the on internet projects and so on, but they have other uh, uh, practices and other needs and other forms of relationships in their community that can be uh, uh, plugged into. So they, uh, um, so, uh, they looked at it in terms of local community needs. Like what, what does my community need that I can personally help from because help, help them with because I know computers. Uh, this was an example of that. So I think they're, they're very interesting to look at. And, and you're right, so I, I don't I'm European, I don't know your Setting. So I, I, I think that you're asking the right uh, question, but I, 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 uh, I wouldn't dare to uh, assume that I, I have an answer for you. But I want to encourage you, uh, because this is an important question. Um, I, I think um, like maybe we can have a conversation afterwards, and I can uh, tell you a little bit more about what I've seen, and, 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 and ways, of, uh, ways of looking at it, and so on, and they might or might not work for you. And then very, very, very briefly about your, your two points. Uh, Mark, are there, are there barriers? I think, I assume there are many. And I assume part of the issue is that uh, uh, um, the, the people who look at these issues are not necessarily the people who are affected by, by challenges rather than barriers. So I think part of the question about equity is also uh, uh, putting decision makers in charge who have personal understanding and personal knowledge and come out of context and so on. Academic research helps to an extent, but in a, in a sense, academic research often, like at least the, the kind that I produce, is quite removed from the actual experience. Uh, uh, so it can give you like a broad direction, and then we say, oh, it's broad bound, whatever. But yeah, life is complicated. It's more than a broad bound. It's much more uh, than a broad bound. Uh, so I, I absolutely agree uh, um, with, with you that there. Uh, this, uh, I, I don't want to make it look like it's a simple issue with, with three simple fixes. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Um, and then, and then this, this question of oral knowledge, uh, I, I think, is, is, is also is a very powerful question. It's also, we have to remind ourselves, Wikipedia as a model comes out of the European tradition, I think it was mentioned earlier also, uh, the European tradition of kind of post-enlightenment, the encyclopedia. This is a particular way of looking at the world and capturing the world and describing the world and so on. It is written, written down, and all these kind of things, by, by, the, by the explorer back then, all, all, the, all these things. Um, uh, so we also have to remind ourselves, this is the form that Wikipedia uh, kind of uh, uh, borrows from, and partially that comes with limitations that we have to kind of be mindful of, and, but also it, it asks us the question, are we happy with those limitations, and do we want to push, push it into forms that currently it does, not, it does not allow to incorporate. Again, decolonizing the internet last year, they specifically looked at these kinds of questions, um, at, at oral knowledge, indigenous knowledge, uh, uh, sacred knowledge, knowledge that maybe in a community not everybody has access to, these kinds of things. Um, yeah, so there are many, many interesting questions uh, to look at here. And I think when I, after attending Wikimania last year, I now think of Wikipedia as the online UN. Because what I'm seeing is not only gen a genuine effort at a global project and a global platform, but a real culture of dialogue and of trying to find a shared understanding and a shared set of practices. And it's hard and it's messy, but I think you're, you're doing incredibly well. Uh, so congr congratulations to you and thank you for having me here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you could question okay. for me. Anna. <laughs> Sorry, just a uh, question. So thank, you, so thank you very much for your presentation. I just want to go back to the paid model and voluntary. So we have been discussing this like a few weeks ago in the French uh, market. Uh, so we, uh, I just made the relationship between the Maslow pyramid and, uh, and the, the 
volunteer on Wikipedia. So is, what is the relation between, uh, I mean, on, on which level the, the volunteer can be on, on the top of the pyramid or uh, on the other uh, level? And we agree that if someone is on, on the bottom of the master pyramid, he's not, it's not easy for him to, to be a like, volunteer or to, to, to contribute like someone on the top of the pyramid. So this is the constant that we have. But the question is, do you think, do, don't you think that if we go to pay the volunteer to do that, uh, there is two impact maybe. We are kind of doping the, the statistics of Wikipedia, all the articles and everything. And what would probably there would be also negative impact on the other volunteers. So if they see their uh, peers like, being paid for something they are doing also for free, so, uh, so it can kind of cause some kind of frustration. Do not ask me any questions. <laughs> uh, but I think that's, that's why we're here, right? To, to look at these issues and to, to look at them with a lot of major perspectives. Uh, yeah, I'll try a, a very short answer, but again, I'd also be happy to, to talk about it in more detail in person. There are a number of things that I would look at. First, one of the things, one of the questions that always arises is do we build this stuff ourselves, or do we, like this is a, like a startup, uh, in this startups we always have this question, do you buy or do you build? Do you build your own technology or do you buy it from someone who's already taken the time to build it? And this is an example where I would suggest, I'm a computer scientist, so I don't know this world in, in great detail, but I know that there's a world of economic development where there's at least decades of experiences uh, looking at exactly these questions. What, what, how do I affect a space when I put money in it? And, and to what extent is that sustainable, to what extent is that capacity building, or to what extent does that have side effects? And how can I anticipate that? How can I plan for that? How do I structure those kinds of arrangements, all these kinds of things? Uh, so this, this is one, one of the things that I will look at. It. I, I think that the second thing that's also important to always remember, these are incredibly contextual circumstances. I think Maslow's hierarchy is maybe useful as a, as a way of structuring, like reminding ourselves that there are different needs and some are maybe more fundamental than others. But even, I think Maslow's hierarchy is probably not universally descriptive of like what the world looks like because everybody to an extent has a spare time and everybody might find themselves in circumstances where they really, really don't, even if they have all the other needs covered. Um, uh, so I think it's helpful to an extent, but also uh, I think in addition to looking at models like Maslow's hierarchy, I think the, the, the really important thing is to always remember we don't really know the place that we're talking about. And, and really, in, in order to understand that place, we need to get someone from that place and have them in the room and tell us. Uh, and I think that is just as important, just as powerful. Um, there, there's a whole co other conversation about the relationship between volunteering and incentivization. Um, and there's, there's, a, there's a conversation I keep having a, a, a lot of the time uh, with people in, in kind of around gamification and blockchains and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because it seems very appealing uh, to kind of incentivize people to do stuff. Which in principle, I can, I can understand the appeal, however, it's quite a complex relationship and sometimes uh, paying people is actually counterproductive. And specifically in volunteering, so there's a long established finding in social sciences. In volunteering setting, once you start paying your volunteers, they often become disengaged. So there is the ability for those two to coexist, and Wikipedia, and Wikimedia, and there are examples of that, and there are many other examples, that those worlds can coexist. However, I think it's, you, 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 you've got to be really careful, and it's not as simple as giving someone a fiver so they can write a, a page. So, so maybe that works sometimes, but also I think just as often it might not actually be that successful in the long run. Um, Thank you so much, uh, Martin, for your presentation, and we'll be having more discussion in the future with other people. Outside the conference room, you can have a discussion, and now we'll be having a presentation on State of the Arabic Project in Wikimedia by Hajmi and Ala. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. to be here. It's my first time in Morocco. It's my first uh, Wiki Arabia. Uh, and I, I'm already loving, this is my first morning here. Uh, um, I'm already loving uh, being able to experience the community and I'm, I'm looking forward to many, many more conversations here while I'm here. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my perspective as a researcher about Wikipedia's concept of knowledge equity, which uh, I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. Many of you will already be quite familiar with it. Uh, I, uh, I'm new to the Wikimedia community. I joined uh, Wikimania last year in Cape Town. 
which was my first in-person encounter with the community. And I was incredibly fascinated uh, uh, with, uh, with how far you've come and what, what you've achieved. Uh, so I, I think in many ways, uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, as, a, as a movement is, uh, uh, is something that a lot of others can learn from. At the same time, you also have, you're, you're constantly, because you're, of your ambitions and your aspirations, you're constantly confronted with new frontiers. And this is also a little bit of what I want to talk about today. But first, may, maybe a very general introduction is, you know, Wikipedia is at this point is a massive project hundreds of millions of pages, millions of contributors. One of the things that's 